N8N version 2 is out, and here are all the biggest changes you need to know about. Just so you know, for the rest of the video, N8N version 1 is going to be on the left, and the new version, version 2, is going to be on the right, so that we can compare the two. If you want to get access to all of the release notes, if you come up here, you can see on the top, if you're still in version 1, you want to go to learn more, just go ahead, click learn more, and you get access to this blog article that announces all of the biggest changes coming to version 2. One of the biggest changes that they're focused on, I'm just going to get this out of the way quickly, is security. It's not the sexiest change, but it is super, super impactful and will make a big difference to your clients if you can tell them that their data is more secure. If you want more details on it, you can read through this more thoroughly in the blog article. You might be wondering, how do I upgrade to version 2? So let me just slide this over here so I can get my face out of the way. And you can just come down into the little bell here. And if you click on update, this will take you to your workspace settings. So you can see we're on the latest stable version, which is 1.12. But if you click in here, you can get access to version 2.0, which is technically still in beta, but the planned full release is scheduled for December 15th. So you would just go ahead and click on this. You come down here, you click save changes. It'll take a couple of minutes for your workspace to restart, and then you'll have access to version two. So let's talk about some of the features that have actually changed. You'll notice immediately the workspace looks slightly different. You can see here we have these toggles between active and inactive. And now in version two, we have published or not published. This is going to come into play in just a minute or two. You can no longer publish your automations directly from this dashboard page. You'll have to do it from inside the workflow itself. One other thing to note is the change in the side panel behavior. In version one, you had to click this arrow to expand the side panel left and right. And in this version over here, we have this little expand sidebar pane right here that you just click this to expand. And also you can actually go ahead and drag this now to expand the sidebar as much as you want. One other thing that has changed in the sidebar, in version one, in order to get access to the settings, you have to click on your name, go into settings, and then you had access to this settings panel over here. What's cool is that in version two, you can just go ahead and settings is right here already exposed for you in the sidebar. So you can just go ahead and click settings and then you can see you have access to all of your settings right here. I'm gonna be honest, this update to version two is a little bit underwhelming, but let's get into some of the changes that are happening inside of our automation workflows. So right away, we can come into the canvas here and we have the same automation set up, but you can see that the canvas looks a little bit different. Again, we have version one on the left here and then version two on the right here, you can see that our nodes are a little bit flatter and more modern looking. And the background dots here are a little bit dimmer. The other change just in this interface, which is small, but kind of nice, is that in version one, when you hover over these dots or these ports on all of the nodes, they just kind of get this red highlight. But in version two, if we zoom in here, you can see these get a white outline and they get a little bit larger. So you can really see what it is that you're actually clicking on. One other change is in the animation that happens when your workflow is executing. So if I just send a message off here, you remember that in version one, you get these nice kind of spinning red arrows here. But in version two, if we go ahead and send off a message, I can just say, hello, hello. You can see instead of those arrows, we get kind of this outline stroke around any of the nodes. Let me know in the comments, which one you like better. The good news about version two is that the underlying JSON structure that builds all of your automations hasn't changed. So you can really easily copy and paste automations from version one or version two, or when you upgrade your workspace to version two, really for the most part, nothing is going to change for you. If you wanna check if you're actually ready to migrate, they actually built a little tool. It's in that first blog article that you can go in here to get information on the migration tools to figure out if you have any automations that might face challenges with upgrading. Nine out of 10 times, you're not going to run into an issue, but this is actually going to detail exactly any of the problems that you might be facing if your automations aren't working correctly in version two. One of the biggest changes to automations is in the way that sub workflows are called. And so we can see here that I just have the same automation again in version one and version two. And what it's doing is it's calling a sub workflow, just the Slack response. And so the automation has changed in the way that it processes responses when it has to actually wait for a user response for any of your human in the loop interactions. So what does this actually mean? Let's go ahead and test this out. So if I want to say, can I schedule a casual Friday? send this message off. This is in version one. If we go ahead and send this off, we can come in here right now. Our agent is processing this and you can see that it has sent a message to Slack waiting for an approval. So if I open up my Slack account, we can see, please approve or deny the following request. Can I schedule a casual Friday approve or deny? So I can just go ahead and click approve, which is great. But if I come in here and we actually go into the chat, you can see this says I've sent a request for approval to schedule casual Friday. I will let you know once I receive a response, but we did receive a response and the agent didn't actually tell us anything. So we can't really do anything from here because we haven't actually received a response. And if we open up this agent, you can see here that this is the response that it gave us. And it really doesn't tell us whether the request was approved or denied. And let me show you why that's a big deal. So in version two, we can go ahead and send off the same message. Can I schedule a casual Friday? And if we send this off, 
I'm going to show you a gotcha moment right here. You can see here that there was an error with the approval workflow. This is one thing I wanted to bring to your attention really quick. You now have the ability, instead of making workflows active or inactive, you actually have to publish them in order to bring them into production. So why does this matter? And what's actually kind of cool about this? So right now we can't actually call this sub workflow because it hasn't been published. So if we go in here and click publish, we can just go ahead and name this V1 and click publish. It's kind of the same as making it active or inactive. But what's really cool about this setting is that if you are making changes or you're making updates to your automation workflows, you can go ahead and make your changes and click save to save your progress. But what if you're not done making all the changes that you want to make before actually moving it to production? So you got done with the day. It's not quite ready to go to production. You click save to save your progress. And then tomorrow you'll finish this up and then you'll click publish to move this thing live. And so we set our sub workflow to publish to make sure that we actually have access to it now. Let me just unpublish this really quick because you can see here, if I come into this Slack response tool and I come down here into this drop down list of my workflows, you can see our Slack response is grayed out right now because we don't actually have access to it because it hasn't been published. But if I come back in here, go ahead, click publish, we can name this V1 again. Click OK. Now we can come back in here, see this drop down, and now we have access to call the sub workflow. Now, if I say, can I schedule a casual Friday? You can see our agent is thinking, it's sending it over to Slack for us. It's going to wait for a response. And so if I come into Slack, I can approve or deny this request. I can go ahead and click approve. But what's really cool about this is now if I come into this tool, you can see that if we go into data here, we can see that whether or not this was approved, it says true, yes, this was approved. And we actually have this response back that says approved. And this is really powerful because now we can do things like add an if node to the end of this. And we can come in here and we can say if the output is equal to approved, now we can go ahead and do something like schedule that meeting, right? We can go ahead and click this on true, connect this up to Google Calendar, and go ahead and create an event for our casual Fridays, right? And if it's not true, we could route this somewhere else to get a different message back to the user or something like that. These are really the biggest changes in version two. Let me know in the comments what you think of this update.